I'll walk through the thriving city of Kuala Lumpur and you may stumble upon pre-war buildings where the flourishing city is built around, making this capital a fusion of the old and the new. Hidden among this urban landscape, you may experience a trip down memory lane as you discover one of the surviving treasures from the olden days, the traditional coffee shops or better known as Kopitiam. The term Kopitiam is a portmanteau. The word kopi comes from the Malay language that means coffee, while tiam is a Hokkien word that translates to shop. Together, this phrase literally refers to being a coffee shop. Often viewed as a quintessential feature of Malaysia public culture and everyday life, the Kopitiam is a Malaysian gem. The Kopitiam is at once a place of intense colours, sounds and activities. It will largely cater to the blue-collar workers and labourers serving cheap snacks, drinks and meals. It was a social centre where men could indulge drinking, eating, meeting and chatting in what has become known as coffee shop talk. This continued into the modern Kuala Lumpur, where working adults and many generations of families still go to the Kopitiam for meals and talks. The Kopitiam is essentially a place that provides a sense of social intimacy and a sense of community for citizens living and working around its neighbourhood. In the heartland of Kuala Lumpur, one of the surviving relics of the Hainanese Kopitiam can be found along Jalan Dangwangi, Kuala Lumpur. With a charming nostalgic setting, Yutki Restaurant is an old-school Hainanese Kopitiam that was established in 1928. The old-school dark wooden chairs, round marble tables, old portraits, old-fashioned floor tiles and handwritten menu hanging on the wall, all of which almost vanish in the hustle and bustle of this modernised city. Yutki retains the charm of an old Malaysian Kopitiam. This family-owned business has been operating for 85 years and is currently in the hands of Mervyn Lee, the grandson of the Kopitiam's founding father. It was handed down to Mervyn from his father, Jack, and was set up by Mervyn's grandfather who came from Hainan Island in China. <laughs> Well, what's the question then? Um, actually, my father started this shop in 1928 and uh, they've been here since then, you know. It, it, uh, it's already 85 years. Our forefathers were all originally all the world. Providing a kind of facility to, uh, to most of those who uh, were working around. Subsequently, some of them also uh, It's a base for them to meet up also. In those days, this was coffee shop is one of the only kind of, uh, a kind of uh, like a meeting place, like a club for people who work in all kinds of uh, whatever jobs and evenings or maybe they will meet up here for that. They daily coffee or you know weekends meet up and all that kind of thing. So it is like uh, a club kind of thing. Well, basically, when coffee shop started, we were just serving coffee, tea, and all the breakfast and half boys and all that. 
So in between them, you see they provide food, uh, you know, drinks, rice, and all that. So he comes out. He's actually in 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 a fusion, so to speak. Things are added on, you know. Everything is added on all the time. Whatever that is, what is required at that moment in time. That the acquisition of the art of cooking is actually, to my mind, is all blended. Whatever is when uh, whoever the owners comes up, maybe they want some dishes, or maybe so it's. Uh, I would not say Chinese food in Malaysia is the coffee shop is actually a fusion of uh, ideas. It is a proof that a gathering place for different communities could exist, that food could bring people together, and uh, people of various culture. Various groups they come here. One of the most enlightening thing is always believe that if any community come, from, from, you know, just keep to themselves, the chances of integration is never there. But if you mix around with various people of different religious background, different ethnic groups, then your ability to look at things in a bigger way. However, in the tide of modernization and commercialization to bolster the city, Kuala Lumpur may pave itself into a city that is losing its history. Many old buildings and its businesses are forced into closure or relocation to make way for businesses that appeal more to the mass market. The government is launching an initiative called Greater KL, which restores historical buildings along the Heritage Trail. Along the Merdeka Square, turning Medan Pasar into a pedestrian area with sidewalk cafes, souvenir shops and a fountain. The domino effect has long begun. Pre-war kopitiams are pressured to terminate or relocate their businesses due to new developments. And Yutki is the next in line. Years, then by, by the time we move out, um, it's been a good run, uh, but things happen now. Uh, coincidentally, the building that we're moving to was house my dad. Uh, my dad's parents were renting, when I, in which he was born in, he grew up in. So uh, it's just next door, and it still has some historic value to us. And we still feel in, in, in a sense, uh, you're still in the same vicinity, literally a stone's throw away. We hope to be able to transition the ground. Again, it's not going to be easy for the fact that um, whatever you see and feel here is a, is a byproduct of time. You can't replicate time. We've seen generations of customers coming here, uh, up to the fifth generation of customers. I'm the third generation running shop, but our customers have reached the fifth. So, and the thing that people connect back some, in, uh, in the sense is that. Uh, some people will say, I used to, my ye ye used to bring me here, my mama used to bring me here, they are no longer with me. I bring my kids out because it's something that it still holds back to what, they, what we, we felt back. There's still that connection to the past. Yutki will be moving in the next three to four months as the building's owner has plans to redevelop the place into a seven storeys budget hotel. Instead of allowing gentrification to happen and erect new tourist attractions or businesses, authorities should help these old institutions perpetuate through the test of time, as Kopitiam is able to invoke heartland intimacy and specific elements of tradition, culture and heritage, which play on memory and nostalgia. Although KL has evolved from a sleepy little mining town to become the foremost city of Malaysia, there are spaces around the city where time had forgotten the Kopitiam. Time may have forgotten these Kopitiams, 
but don't allow the upcoming generation to be complacent and forget their forefathers' history and heritage. It is not so much about the dollars and cents, it is about maintaining goodwill, the closeness fostered with the customers.